Now we are going to fetch the data for our website. We are going to learn how to use ENV files so that we can set up global variables. And then we are of course going to display that data and style it a little bit so it doesn't look hideous. So let me just talk a little bit about the requirements for this video. Uh, so first of all, you're going to be needing Strapi, and if you don't have it already set up, uh, you can check out my Strapi video, and we are using the exact same setup that we did there. Uh, the Strapi is going to be on the local host 1337, this is our API that we are getting from it. Of course, you're going to be needing the Next.js app that we created in the previous two episodes. And I would also suggest that you check out my React 2020 series where we cover the basics of React. So first of all, we just want to create that .env file. And in that file, we are going to define the path to our API. Now, we are doing that because when we push our website to the server, of course, the path to the API is not going to be the same because as you will see in this episode, we are going to be using the local host API. Our API, when we push it to the server, is going to live somewhere on the internet. So we are going to have a different .env file on the production server than we have on our development machine. And that is the reason why we are creating .env files, because we don't want to go into our application when, when we want to push it uh, to the server. We don't want to go through uh, all of our code and change the paths to our API, because we are going to be calling the API several times through our application. We need to install that env plugin so that we can use it in our Next.js conf file. So we are just going to do npm install.env. Okay, now that we did that, we can go to our code editor and create that env file. And you are going to create it in the root of your project. And now in it, we are just going to define the path to our API. So it's going to be HTTP localhost 1337 or lead, save it. Now this is not going to work all by itself. So we need to make some changes in our next.config.js file. So first of all, we are going to require that env that we just installed so require.env.config and now in module exports we are going to define uh, env object and in it we are going to define our api url through the process as you will see so like this you define it api url uh, process.env.api url so now with this we are going to have access uh, to the variables that we define in that env file of course, those variables don't have to be just the path to your API. They can be any sort of data that you will, you are going to be needing throughout your application. So any kind of global variable that is going to probably uh, be used in your application. But for now, we are just going to be using that API URL uh, for fetching our data. Okay, so once we did this, so we define our variable, uh, we set up our next.config.js file, we need to restart our server and start it again for these changes to take effect. So I'm just going to control C out of this and then I'm going to run my server again. And now it's time to fetch our data. And for that, we are going to be using isomorphic unfetch. Uh, so we need to install it. So you just do npm install isomorphic unfetch like this, press enter and wait for it to install. Okay, so once this is done, we now go to our code editor and we think about where we want to catch, catch that data. So we want to display the list of movies on our front page. And since we are doing a server-side server rendered app, we are going to fetch our data on each request. So whenever somebody gets to the page that they want to see, we are going to fetch some data from our API. In this case, this is going to be our homepage. So we are going to go to index.js and we are going to try to fetch that data right here. So how do we do that? We are going to do that through a special quote unquote special async function called get server side props uh, that are going to uh, get all of our data 
And then when the data is available for displaying, then uh, the server side is going to render our page uh, to the user. As of the newest version of Next.js, so just check out if you are using version at least 9.3 of Next.js, uh, there are a few methods uh, for doing this. So one is get server side props, and there are two others. So you can also use get static props. So you would use get static props if you are building a statically generated site. Uh, you would also use get static paths if you are using static generation and pre-rendering, but we are using server-side rendering, so we are going to be using get server-side props. But as I said, these are the new features from the newest version of Next.js, so at least version 9.3. Before that, uh, you only had get initial props. And as it, as it says right here, it's recommended to use either get static props or get server side props if you're using Next.js at least uh, version 9.3. So we are going to be using this get server side props. Okay, and to use it, you just go to your index.js file and below your component, uh, you would define that function. So to define that function, you would just do export async function get, get server side props. Great. Now that we did that, let's define our API URL. Since we defined it in our .env file, uh, we can do it like this. So we just destructure process.env and you would have this API URL variable available now to you. So now we want to get everything from our API slash movies. So if we go to that address in the browser, we would be getting our API data. And we are going to be catching that data using fetch from isomorphic unfetch. So first of all, we have to import it into our index.js file right here. And now we want to get everything from our API URL slash movies. So we are getting that response. We are defining variable res. We are waiting for fetch to finish and get our movies. And then we want to get the data uh, in JSON format. So we are defining our data is going to be await res.json. And now we just want to return that data as props. So we are returning props. And in props, we are defining movies object. And to that object, we are just going to add our data. And now we should be able to access those movies in our component. And to access them, we do this. So I'm just going to save this, go to our component. So home component, uh, we are just going to actually make it a little bit different. So as you can see, we are getting these braces right here, but actually we need curly braces because we are going to be returning this. And before that, we want to console log out our movies. So this is not going to work, but something like this is going to work for us. And now we want to console log out that, uh, those movies. To do that, we are going to destructure them first here or we can do just props and then we can console log props.movies or we can just do this movies and then we can console log out movies. Okay, save this and check it out if it works. Okay, so we refresh the page and if you go right here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. As you can see, we are getting three movies, Inception, Big Lebowski and Goodfellas. Great. So we fetch that data. It is coming to our components. It is coming to our homepage. Now all we have to do is display it and make it look at least kind of nice. Of course, now to display that data, we can just do something like this. We can remove this is our front page and go through the movies and just display them on the front page. Kind of like this, right? So we could do something like this. We are just mapping through movies. Uh, we are defining this div right here. And in that div, we are displaying the movie title, for example. If I save this, go to my homepage. As you can see, we are getting Inception, Big Lebowski and Goodfellas. Great. Uh, of course, we are getting this warning right here because uh, when you're mapping through something, you should have a key property, which we didn't define. We are going to define it later because we are not going to be doing this this way, of course. Uh, since we don't want to display the movies like this, we want to display them through another component. 
So we are now going to define a component which we are just going to call card. We are going to have a card component, for example, and we are going to create that card component in our components directory. So you just go to components, new file, and we are going to create card.js. And in it, we are just going to put some scaffolding for our component. We are importing styled from emotion styled, like we did in the previous episode. So please check that out if you don't know what's going on here. Uh, we are de defining our card component. Uh, then we are def uh, returning card styled uh, from here because we are going to be using that so that we can style our component. In here, we are destructuring our props and we are getting the movie prop from it so that we can now use this to display the title of our movie, for example, like this. So if I save this right now, we want to display all of our movies in those cards. We can now go to index.js and first of all, import our card component like this. So importing card from components card. And now here, instead, instead of this div, we are going to define our card component. And then we are going to pass in the key. Uh, the key is going to be movie.id and the movie is going to be the movie variable that we define in our map function. And that's about it. Let's just save this and see if it works. So if I save this, go to our browser, we are still getting the titles of our movies, but now we are not getting, getting any warnings or errors because we define that key that a React was warning us about. So all that is left to do right now is just to style our component a little bit and to better display our movies. Uh, first of all, I'm going to define API URL process.env. So we are going to destructure process.env to get API URL. You're going to see uh, why we are doing that in just a second. So now in here, uh, I'm going to define a poster. So I'm defining a div with the class name of poster. In it, I'm going to add image tag and that image tag is going to take this API URL plus movie.movieposter.url. Why we are doing the, it this way, uh, let me just show you. So if we go to our browser, check out what we are getting from our API. If you go to any movie, as you can see, movie poster is right here. And that movie poster has a URL of uploads and then the name of the file. Now it doesn't have the absolute URL to your image. So the absolute URL would be localhost 1337 uploads and then the name of the image. So that's why we need to have this API URL that we define in our ENV file so that we can get those images. So if I save this right now, check it out. As you can see, we are getting the images of our movies. They're a little bit big right now, but we are going to handle that with the CSS. So the next thing that we want to do is define the body of our movie. And in that body, we want to display two things. So we want to display the movie title and the movie description. So the movie title is pretty easy to do. So we would just have, for example, an H3 tag and say movie.movie title. We already did this. Uh, but the description, what we want to do with it is we want to dangerously set inner HTML for the description because we are, don't know what type of data we can be getting uh, from our API. So for example, we can even get some formatted edged HTML data. So we want to do something like this. So we are opening up a P tag and in it we are setting dangerously set inner HTML. We are getting that HTML and setting it to be more movie that description. Okay. And that's about it. So if we save this, uh, go to our browser, as you can see, we are getting our images, we are getting our titles and we are getting our text for each movie. Now let's just make this a bit prettier uh, with some CSS. We, I'm not going to go line by line in CSS. I'm just going to copy it uh, in because as you know, we rarely deal with actual CSS in these episodes and in this series. And as you will see, the CSS is pretty easy to comprehend. So I'm just going to paste this in here. This right here is going to style this card styled element. And then in it, we have body H3 and P tags. If I save this right now, go to our page. As you can see, now it looks like this. 
Ok, so this has been it for this episode, remember everything we did here will be available for you on github, the link will be in the description below, and as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.